Hello everyone, welcome to our first video on this channel. Welcome to our video on exploring the wonders of the solar system, a journey to every planet. Today we'll take you on a staggering excursion through our inestimable area. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more future videos. Let's first talk a little bit about the solar system. By definition, solar system is a vast cosmic system that consists of the sun, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and other celestial bodies bound together. His main components are the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Excluding Pluto, we will discuss about him in very next video. First stop is Mercury. This planet is the nearest planet to the Sun. In spite of its temperatures, which can reach up to 430 degrees Celsius or roughly 800 degrees Fahrenheit, at night it can go down to minus 180 degrees Celsius or minus 290 Fahrenheit, roughly. Mercury's surface is loaded with fascinating highlights like cavities and precipices. It's resembling the Moon's surface. These impact craters were formed by collisions with asteroids and comets over billions of years. Interesting fact is that Mercury does not have any natural satellites or moons. We explored the Mercury once. The Mariner 10 mission, which took place in 1974, and 1975 was the first spacecraft to visit Mercury. It provided valuable data about the planet's surface. Mercury's proximity to the Sun and its lack of a substantial atmosphere make it a challenging planet to study. But missions like this have significantly increased our understanding of this rocky world. Following up, we have Venus, a second planet in our solar system. Known as Earth's twin, Venus is a planet canvassed in thick billows of sulfuric corrosive. Venus is similar size to Earth, with a diameter just slightly smaller. It is composed mostly of rock and metal and has a thick atmosphere. Its outrageous temperatures and climatic tension make it an unforgiving spot for any space pioneer. Venus has an unusual rotation. It rotates on its axis very slowly and in the opposite direction to most other planets including Earth. This means that if you were standing on Venus, you would see the Sun rise in the west and set in the east. Just like Mercury, Venus does not have any natural satellites or moons. Venus is often visible in the evening or morning sky and is sometimes referred to as the evening star or the morning star. Studying Venus is crucial for understanding the diversity of planetary environments in our solar system and beyond. While it shares similarities with Earth, its extreme conditions make it a fascinating and challenging subject of study. Presently, how about we continue on toward our own valuable planet, Earth. With its different scenes and life-filled environments, Earth is genuinely stand out. It's the ideal spot for us to call home. Earth is the third planet from the Sun in our solar system and is the only known celestial body to support life. Earth is the fifth largest planet in our solar system with a diameter of about 13,000 kilometers, 8,000 miles. Earth has been a starting point for space exploration missions, including sending satellites, probes, and human missions to study the solar system and beyond. Understanding Earth is essential for understanding the conditions necessary for life and provides valuable insights for the study of other planets and celestial bodies. Mars, frequently alluded to as the Red Planet because of its corroded appearance, is the fourth planet from the Sun in our nearby planet group. Mars is roughly a portion of the size of Earth. Mars has a different and captivating surface with highlights, for example, valleys, gulches, polar ice covers, and the biggest fountain of liquid magma in the planetary group, Olympus Mons. Mars has a slim air, multiple times less thick than Earth's, 
fundamentally made out of carbon dioxide, 95.3%, nitrogen, 2.7%, and argon, 1.6%. Mars has polar ice covers made of water and dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide. These covers grow and contract with the evolving seasons. The polar ice covers are a significant piece of Mars's water cycle. Mars has two little moons, Phobos and Deimos, which are sporadically formed and remembered to be caught space rocks. Mars has been a focal point of astrobiology and the quest for past or present microbial life. Mars is an objective for future human investigation. Associations like NASA and privately owned businesses have plans for maintain missions to the Red Planet, imagining the chance of laying out a human presence on Mars in the next few decades. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our nearby planet group, and it is a gas monster made for the most part out of hydrogen and helium. As I mentioned, Jupiter is the biggest planet in our planetary group. It is in excess of multiple times more extensive than Earth. Jupiter has a thick and dynamic environment with groups of mists that flow at various paces and in inverse bearings. The incomparable red spot is a Goliath storm in Jupiter's climate that has been noticed for over 300 years. We will also be talking about this red spot in our future videos, so make sure you leave a like and subscribe for that. Jupiter has a huge arrangement of moons, with the four biggest known as the Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. These moons were found by Galileo Galilei in 1610. Also, Jupiter has a weak ring framework. The rings are not generally so unmistakable as Saturn's rings and were first found by the Explorer 1 shuttle in 1979. Jupiter has a quick turn, finishing one full revolution on its hub in around 9.9 .9 hours. The Galilean moons are exceptionally compelling for investigation. Europa, for instance, has a subsurface sea underneath its cold outside, making it an objective for future missions looking for possible extraterrestrial life. Jupiter has been visited by a few shuttle, Explorer 1 and 2, Galileo and Juno. These missions have given important information about Jupiter's climate, attractive field and moons. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun in our planetary group and is effectively unmistakable by its dazzling ring framework. Saturn is the second biggest planet in our planetary group. Saturn's ring framework is perhaps of the most conspicuous component and comprises of different meagre, concentric rings comprised of ice particles and rough trash. The rings are partitioned into a few significant ring gatherings, including the A, B and C rings. The Cassini division is a hole in the rings that isolates the An and B rings. Saturn has a thick environment made fundamentally out of hydrogen and helium, with limited quantities of methane, smelling salts and other follow gases. Saturn has areas of strength for a field, albeit not so solid as Jupiter's. The attractive field isn't lined up with the planet's pivot hub and is marginally shifted. Saturn has a huge arrangement of moons, with north of 80 affirmed moons and a lot seriously anticipating affirmation. Titan is the biggest moon of Saturn and the second biggest moon in the nearby planet group. It has a thick environment and pools of fluid hydrocarbons on its surface. Saturn has a somewhat quick turn, finishing one full pivot on its hub in around 10.5 hours. The Cassini-Huygens mission a joint venture between NASA, the European Space Organization, ESA, and the Italian Space Office, ASI, broadly concentrated on Saturn and its moons. The Cassini shuttle circled Saturn for more than 13 years, giving an abundance of information and dazzling pictures. Future missions, for example, NASA's Dragonfly mission, plan to investigate Titan more meticulously. Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun in our planetary group and is delegated an ice goliath. It is basically made out of hydrogen and helium with modest quantities of water, smelling salts and methane. Uranus has a thick climate that comprises for the most part of hydrogen, 83%,
and helium, 15%, with hints of methane, water fume, and smelling salts. The presence of methane in its air gives Uranus its blue-green tone. Uranus has an exceptional rotational pivot. It pivots almost its ally, with a hub slant of around 98 degrees. This outrageous slant is believed to be the consequence of an impact with an enormous item right off the bat in the nearby planet group's set of experiences. Uranus has somewhere around 27 known moons. Miranda is perhaps of the most outstanding moon, known for its shifted and complex landscape. The main shuttle to visit Uranus is NASA's Explorer 2. It directed a flyby of Uranus in 1986, giving significant information about the planet's climate, rings and moons. Uranus is a freezing planet, with temperatures coming to as low as minus 224 degrees Celsius Uranus stays an entrancing and puzzling planet, and further investigation and study might uncover more about its exceptional qualities and history inside the planetary group. Neptune is the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun in our nearby planet group. It is named an ice goliath, like Uranus, and is made for the most part out of hydrogen, helium, water and other unpredictable mixtures. Neptune's air is fundamentally made out of hydrogen, around 74%, helium, around 25%, and hints of methane, water fume, and alkali. As on Uranus, the presence of methane in its climate gives Neptune its trademark blue tone. Neptune has dynamic weather conditions, including the presence of tempests and enormous scope highlights in its air. The incomparable dim spot was a noticeable element seen in Neptune's southern half of the globe during the Explorer 2 flyby in 1989. In any case, ensuing perceptions with the Hubble Space Telescope uncovered that the incomparable dull spot had vanished, demonstrating the powerful idea of Neptune's climate. Neptune encounters very quick breezes, with some arriving at rates of north of 2,000 kilometers each hour. The climate additionally includes white mists and dim tempests, for example, the dull vortices saw by the Hubble Space Telescope. Neptune has areas of strength for a field that is shifted comparative with its revolution hub. The attractive field is multiple times more impressive than Earth's. Triton is Neptune's biggest moon and perhaps of the most strange moon in the nearby planet group. Triton has a retrograde circle, meaning it circles Neptune the other way of the planet's revolution. This proposes that Triton might have been caught by Neptune's gravity. Neptune's special attributes and its job as the peripheral ice goliath in our nearby planet group make it a fascinating object of study. The last one we have to travel to is the one and only, the Sun. The Sun is actually a star, even though many people think it's a planet or similar to planet. The Sun is the star at the focal point of our nearby planet group, and it assumes a crucial part in supporting life on the planet. The Sun is made basically out of hydrogen, around 74% by mass, and helium, around 24% by mass. Different components like oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron make up the excess 2%. Sun is a layered, powerful bundle of blistering, ionized gas, or plasma. It has a few particular layers, including the center, radiative zone, convective zone, photosphere, chromosphere, and crown. The center is the deepest area where atomic combination responses occur. Hydrogen particles break her to shape helium, delivering massive measures of energy all the while. The temperature of the sun differs across its layers, the center temperature is around 15 million degrees Celsius, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, while the surface, photosphere, is cooler at around 5,500 degrees Celsius. The apparent surface of the sun is known as the photosphere. It shows different elements, including sunspots, which are cooler, and hazia regions, and sun-based granules, which are little convection cells. The sun continually delivers a surge of charged particles known as the sun-powered breeze into space. The sun gives the energy that supports life on Earth through daylight, 
sun-based radiation drives weather conditions, sea flows, and the world's environment. Understanding the sun's properties and conduct is urgent for figuring out the elements of our planetary group and the more extensive universe. Various space missions, telescopes and logical instruments are committed to concentrating on the sun and its effect on space climate. And that's the end of our small little one video journey. We've been on every planet in this video, but in reality we only went on the moon. Who knows what we will do in the near future? Question for this video is, why do we know more about space than our own oceans? That's a theme for another video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more future uploads. This was Ethereal Nex, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.